All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at a product from MFJ. It's the 911H, and it is a 4 to 1 or a 1 to 1 current and balance. Here it is right here. I don't want to waste any time, so let's go ahead and get started. Oh, wait a minute. Before we do get started, I want to mention that there's some buttons down below. A like button, a comment button, a subscribe button. Go ahead and click them. It'll make you happy. All right, folks, and it wouldn't be a smoking ape video without a little bit of internet. So here is the MFJ Enterprises website and the product page for the 911H. And uh, you can see that it says Balan, Unbalan, switchable for 1 to 1 or 4 to 1, 10 through 160 meters, 300 watts. And one of the things I just wanted to mention real quick is that MFJ sent me a big box of gear. And they said, uh, you know, go ahead and test this stuff out, do a review if you want, and uh, let us know how you like it. So I did get this product free of charge in exchange for this video review. I just wanted to make that clear. Anyhow, if you take a quick look at the description, it says a switchable true 1 to 1 or 4 to 1 current balance or unknown transmission line transformer using low permeability ferrite cores. Gives amazing flat response, 1.8 uh, to 300 megahertz. Easily handles 300 watts, uh, transforms 200 or 50 ohm balanced or unbalanced loads to 50 ohms. So let's go ahead and take a look. They also have a uh, user manual that you have to get online. And uh, I did look at some reviews on this particular product, and one of the things I saw were people complaining that uh, it was not waterproof. And uh, when you take a look at it, the first sentence says it's designed for indoor use. Also down here, it says the MFJ uh, 911H is intended for applications protected from the elements out of the weather. So if you buy something that's not built to be put outside, don't expect it to be. That's kind of uncool. Anyhow, they show a diagram where you go from your transceiver to your external tuner and then to your balun uh, or unun device and then into your feed line. I just wanted to show a quick antenna example. And this is the type of antenna that you would use, one that uses a uh, balanced feed line. In this particular example, it says 300 ohm feeder. You would want something with a 200 ohm feeder if you were going to use the four to one features of this device. It's typically a doublet, uh, maybe a G5RV. I don't have a G5RV, so I haven't played around with them. Uh, sometimes you'll see a uh, feed line that is uh, 450 ohms. And again, you would need a different device. But again, if you're using a 200 ohm feed line, this might be the device for you. MFJ also provides a copy of the schematic, and then you can see how this device works in the event that you need to do any uh, modifications, repair, or upgrade work. So let's take a quick look at the MFJ 911H device. And then you can see that it has a typical coax input for the 50 ohm unbalanced. And uh, in our case, we're going to use an adapter here. And there is a switch to toggle between the 1 to 1 setting and the 4 to 1 setting. It uses binding posts to connect your ladder line. And in the event that you're using it as a un -un for a, an unbalanced uh, feed line, there is a jumper configuration that you need to make onto that wing nut. It's not too complicated and it is explained in the instruction manual. Here's the box that it ships in, and you can see it has the model number and also notates that it's made in the United States. Inside the box, there's nothing exciting, just some bubble wrap, a plastic bag, and a piece of paper telling you that you can get the manual online at MFJ Enterprises' website. In this video, we're going to do our tests with the Nano VNA H. It's my favorite Nano VNA, and we also use the short jumper as part of our calibration um, reference plane. This is the connector that I talked about. It goes down to an SMA. It's an SMA F or female that will allow me to connect this directly to my Nano BNA device. We're going to use Nano VNA Saver on my computer. We're also going to use an MFJ dummy load as our 50 ohm test. And then for our 200 ohm test, I took two 100 ohm resistors and I lined them up in parallel. And that equals 200 ohms. And then we also use this uh, Anang AN808 multimeter for some of the testing that we're going to do. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop this baby open and see what's doing on the inside. All 
Everything looks well constructed. Uh, what I will say that I would be a little bit uh, concerned or nervous running this at 300 watts for extended periods of time, especially on a uh, high duty cycle mode. You can see the connections to the SO239. You can see the connections to the binding post and then the connections to the switch all appear to be in uh, pretty, pretty good quality working order. And then the switch works just fine. You can see how the wire comes in and goes through your two toroid cores. Um, I did not count the wraps, but I'm pretty sure it's either nine or 12 turns. And they look to be around uh, 1.4 inches across on the toroids. And then I just played around with this multimeter and did some continuity testing and tested the switch to see how everything works. It wasn't too terribly exciting, but I'm a little nerdy like that and I like to play around with stuff, so that's what I did. Let's go ahead and hook this up to the Nano VNA and uh, see what kind of readings we get. So here's an example of a four to one current uh, ballon. And I actually attempted to make one of these. And what I didn't do correctly is if you take a look at this, their mirror images are a left and right of each other. And uh, when I made mine, I did not do that. And as a result, my four to one ballon didn't work. If you wanna check out that video, it's in, uh, in my antenna playlist and I'm sure it'll be entertaining. Anyhow, this person, uh, M0PZT, he seems like he really knows his stuff, and he goes through this particular two-core four-to-one ballon um, and insists it's the proper way to build one. I think he might be right, and he uses a guanella wrap, I think is how you say that. Um, and essentially, you have uh, two, two wires that are wrapped around a uh, toroid ferrite core, um, 12 turns, and it uses a crossover technique. So the setup was uh, pretty simple here. I used channel zero or port zero and the jumper to go ahead and connect to the adapter, which is connected directly to the ballon or unun. Next is the configuration where I made test leads that connect to my dummy load and then using alligator clips connected them to the binding post. Once I did this, we calibrated or we already calibrated our nano VNA and then we ran a sweep from one hertz all the way up to 30 megahertz. For this test, we left the switch in the one-to-one -one position because we're going from a 50 ohm input to a 50 ohm output. And as you can see, it's one-to-one -one flat all the way across to all of the hand bands. So even in the event that you are not using uh, this device on a ladder line per se, you can still use it as a one-to-one -one, uh, common mode current choke or a balance choke. And uh, it looks like it would work pretty well. This is a pretty impressive metric or, or chart that we're looking at here from my perspective. Next, you'll see the configuration that we used for the 200 ohm uh, test. And in this one, we moved the switch down to the four to one position. I was a little surprised to see these peaks, but they are not within the hand band, so it's really a non-issue. And then you can see we're below 1.1 to 1 across most of the ham bands. Uh, across everything, we are still below like a 1.13, 1 uh, which is pretty good performance. So in this case, using a 200 ohm ladder line or 200 ohm antenna, your 4 to 1 balance should work uh, just fine. No issues here. I'm pretty happy to see that. This is the point in the video where I say thank you to everybody for watching and thanks to MFJ for sending me this device for my consideration. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and leave them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate it.